Hey, what's up guys, it's Foster. And in today's video, I'm not gonna be doing an install on our WRX, but instead I'm gonna be giving you a roadmap for how you can make some high horsepower with your VB WRX. But before we get started, let's go ahead and cover some of the basics. It seems pretty obvious, but modifying your car, it's gonna decrease the reliability. So keep that in mind. Make sure that you've got a budget set aside in case things break. And there's a chance you might blow your motor up as well. And if that happens, it's definitely not gonna be my fault. Uh, so keep that in mind. But if you just picked one of these cars up or if you waited till your warranty expired and you're finally ready to start modifying it, hopefully you find this guide helpful. So in stock form, the 22WX makes 240 45 horsepower and 253 foot-pounds of torque. I know this because we took our WRX to the dyno right after we got it and we tested it out. And I have to say that is pretty good for some stock numbers, but really the magic of the FA24 comes from when you start to tune it. This engine responds really well to bolt-on modifications and the performance that you get out of some minor tuning and some minor bolt-ons is pretty impressive. Of course, the STI's EJ257 is still gonna be the better choice if you're trying to make crazy high horsepower. Since the FA24 is less proven and there's less known about it, there's still some development to be had. Stock for stock, the VB WRX does keep up with a VA STI in terms of straight line speed, so already out of the box, you can tell that this thing has a ton of potential. But with that said, there's already a pretty well-known mod path that you need to take to make high horsepower with this car. So why don't we go ahead and get right into it. All right, let's start at 300 horsepower. Luckily for the new FA24, you really don't have to even change any hardware to hit that 300 horsepower mark. All you need is a tune. So the Cobb access port has a 91 octane stage one tune, and you're gonna get about 290 horsepower out of it. And then if you've got better fuel in your area, you can do a 93 octane tune, and that's gonna get you about 300 horsepower. So literally all you have to do is push a couple buttons and you're gonna pick up about 40 to 50 wheel horsepower. Of course, it's gonna be different depending on what dyno you use, but this is by far the easiest way to make power with this car, and it's where I recommend everyone starts. So in addition to being able to tune your car, you're gonna be able to run your diagnostics, check engine lights, uh, time your vehicle's performance, like zero to 60, add launch control. So a whole bunch of cool features on the Cobb access port. So once you've got the Cobb access port, the next mod I'd recommend is a cat back exhaust. That's gonna allow your car to breathe a little bit better. It's gonna reduce the back pressure and you're gonna pick up about eight to 10 horsepower. Now there's not a huge power difference between different cat back exhausts, so that's really more of a personal preference, but Nvidia makes some great ones, AWE, uh, Remark, and then if you've got a little bit more money to spend, you can go with a titanium exhaust like a Tomei, and that's gonna save you a little bit of weight. Up next, let's talk about making 350 horsepower. Now, in the past with the previous generation WRX, it's actually taken a lot of mods to get to this point, but as you can tell with the FA24, it's a lot easier to make power, and so installing an intake on these cars is gonna almost get you to that 350 horsepower range. You're gonna see somewhere around 30 to 50 horsepower depending on the intake and the dyno and the tune that you've got with it. A whole bunch of great intakes for the FA24 for you to choose from, uh, such as one from ETS, one from Perrin, and one from AEM, and they all offer their unique advantages and disadvantages. For instance, the Perrin intake you actually don't need a tune for, you can run it on the stock tune because it has a similar size MAF housing. But if you get an ETS or an AEM intake, I would recommend getting a tune to really optimize the performance. Speaking of ProTunes, that's gonna be the next thing on your list. You're gonna see a huge power jump by getting a custom tune for your vehicle that's mapped exactly for the modifications you have, and it can be pushed a little bit closer to the car's potential versus the Cobb off the shelf and the stock tune both leave a lot of performance on the table. So you should definitely consider getting a tune from a reputable tuner, and I'd recommend going to someone who specializes in Subarus because these are very specific engines, and someone with a lot of experience such as Graham from Boosted Performance is gonna help you get the most out of your car. Now, when our car had an intake and a catback exhaust on it with a ProTune, we saw 340 horsepower and 420 foot-pounds of torque, so you're gonna pick up a serious amount of power just by getting a tune. 
The last mod you should consider for 350 wheel horsepower is a J-pipe. Now, if you have a street car, make sure that you get a J-pipe with a cat because deleting your cats is gonna be stinky. And depending on what your state you live in, it might also be against the law. So make sure that you're paying attention to that when you're modifying your car. But let's say you're building a track car. If you add a J-pipe to it, you're gonna pick up around 20 wheel horsepower. And it's especially gonna help in that top end. And so I'd recommend going with something like an ETS J-pipe. It's got a really high quality Jesse cat. And again, it's gonna help your car breathe a little bit better with its exhaust. Okay, 400 horsepower. Now this is where things start to get really spicy. And at this power level, I would definitely recommend switching to an alternative fuel like E85. If you don't have E85 available in your area, there are some alternatives like methanol injection or race fuel, but since E85 is the most widely available, I'm gonna stick with that for this video. There's several benefits to E85, including the fact that it does naturally run a little bit colder, giving your engine some cooling benefits, but mainly the fact that it's more oxygenated, meaning it requires less boost in order to make the same amount of power with regular gasoline. And it's also more knock resistant, so you can run more aggressive timing without the risk of detonation. So at 400 horsepower, you're definitely gonna wanna upgrade your stock intercooler as well. And there's basically two ways you can go. You can go with a top mount intercooler like we have here on RWX. This one is from Cobb, but there's also ones available from ETS and from Grimspeed. And those are all gonna help increase your airflow and provide cooler air, which means more consistent horsepower and higher horsepower numbers. Or if you don't wanna go with the top mount, I know ETS also has a front mount kit available for this car as well. So another thing you're gonna to wanna to think about upgrading at this power level it's over 9, is your stock clutch. Surprisingly, the stock clutch does pretty well in the 22 WX, but over time, high horsepower levels and high torque is gonna wear your clutch out. So if you're looking at replacements, there's several options you can choose from. You can go with a twin disc or you can go with a sprung organic clutch, which is what I would recommend if you're still driving your car on the street. Uh, I'd stay away from options like a six puck clutch or anything like that because that is gonna end up putting a lot more stress on your transmission. All right, 450 horsepower. Now this is where things get absolutely bananas and there's really not that many cars in the US that are making this power level with the new FA24. But there are a few shops that have been doing their research and pushing the limit of what you can make with these cars and it seems like 450 horsepower is possible. Now it goes without saying that you're obviously gonna need all the mods that I've said in the video so far. You're gonna wanna do everything you can do to optimize that airflow. One thing I haven't mentioned is a charge pipe. I know Perrin makes a charge pipe, so you might wanna look into that as well. But the biggest thing here is working with a reputable shop and working with a tuner who knows what they're doing. Now there's a couple shops in the US that I've found that are making this high horsepower level. Felix Performance works with a tuner named Drunk Man Tuning, and he's got several VBs to that 420, 430 horsepower range. Uh, I know Prime Motoring has several VBs that are in that 450 horsepower range. And the highest one I could find was 470 horsepower, 469 foot-pounds of torque at 21 PSI with an E50 blend. So if you guys have heard of any FA24s making more power than that, let me know in the comments section down below. But as far as I'm aware, that is the highest horsepower FA24 in the US. So like I mentioned, it's gonna come down to having a good relationship with a shop and a tuner that you can trust if you wanna push your car to the absolute limit. Most of the shops are doing this for their own research or setting their car up for a drag pass. So really you don't wanna leave your car tuned to the ragged edge at 450 horsepower, but it is pretty crazy to think that the FA24 can make that type of power on a stock bottom end. It also goes without saying that you're gonna start bending rods and breaking transmissions at this power level, so launches and really aggressive driving are pretty much out of the question unless you wanna to have to pay for something. Well, I ran out of time yesterday to wrap up the video, but hopefully you found this mod guide helpful. And I hope I save you a little bit of money as well, because if you just randomly buy parts on your car expecting to get certain results, sometimes it doesn't always work out, so it's always good to have a plan in mind. And as I mentioned before in the video, starting out with that Cobb access port is gonna allow you to custom tune your car and accommodate for different bolt-ons, so this is definitely a great starting point. If you guys do wanna pick up any of the parts you saw in the video, I'll make sure I put links in the description down below. And with that said, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you later.